Apoptosis. Apoptosis extends over three steps, initiation, execution, and phagocytosis. Initiation may be initiated by two different mechanisms, depending on whether the initiating signal stems from inside or outside the cell. Intrinsic Pathway of Initiation The most frequent signals that activate intrinsic initiation are irreparable and irreversible DNA lesions. These lesions lead to the activation of ATM, a protein that is able to activate the tumor suppressor protein P53. In addition to many other proteins, P53 is able to activate the protein BAX. BAX forms pores in the outer membrane of mitochondria. Calcium ions, protons, and other molecules which are located in the intermembrane region between the outer and the inner membrane may leak into the cytosol. One of these molecules is the protein cytochrome C. In the cytosol, cytochrome C binds to APAF and may then associate with an inactive form of procaspase 9. As a consequence, the inhibiting domain of the procaspase is hydrolyzed and dissociates from the protease. By this mechanism, caspase 9 becomes active. Active caspase 9 is able to cleave additional caspases and to destroy many other proteins. In this way, caspase 9 initiates the so-called caspase cascade. This cascade denotes a stepwise cascade of proteases that cleave and thus activate each other. The concentration of active proteases in the cell increases rapidly, leading to the destruction of many different proteins. Extrinsic Pathway of Initiation The extrinsic pathway of initiation is caused by extracellular signals. A common extrinsic factor that initiates apoptosis is tumor necrosis factor alpha, abbreviated TNF-alpha, which is secreted by many cells, like T-killer cells. Such cells can induce apoptosis in cells that are no longer required or are dangerous for the organism, for example, tumor cells. TNF-alpha binds to the TNF receptor at the outer membrane of the cell. Subsequently, the so-called death domain at the cytoplasmic side of the receptor is activated. As a result, cytosolic proteins with their own death domains bind and are activated. The first protein that binds to the cytosolic part of the receptor is the TNF receptor-associated protein with death domain, or TRAD. Next, the protein FAS-associated protein with death domain binds, which recruits procaspase 8. This protease is able to autocatalyze the hydrolysis of its inhibiting segment, leading to active caspase 8, which disassociates from the receptor and is then able to initiate the caspase cascade. Execution Cleavage of DNA Important steps of the execution phase are the cleavage of DNA and the cleavage of the cytoskeleton. In the normal cell, DNAs is complex to an inhibitor and is inactive. After initiation and activation of the caspase cascade, the active caspase 3 is able to cleave this inhibitor. Activated DNAs cleaves DNA. Cleavage sites are located at regular intervals of 180 base pairs. In between, histone proteins of nucleosomes protect the DNA against DNA's cleavage. Execution Cleavage of the Cytoskeleton Caspase 3 cleaves many other proteins, such as proteins of the cytoskeleton. Hereby, the cell loses its structure. Next, other proteins cause the cell to collapse into vesicles, the so called apoptotic blebs. Most blebs contain mitochondria and also portions of the nucleus including DNA. These components allow energy to be maintained and new proteins synthesized. The rapid breakup of the cell and of the formed vesicles is thus avoided, preventing an inflammatory reaction in the surrounding tissue. Phagocytosis The various processes of the execution phase lead to significant modifications of the structure and composition of the outer membranes of cells and apoptotic blebs. Based on the modified membrane structure, phagocytes, like macrophages, can recognize the blebs. In the cytosol of the phagocytosing cell, the blebs fuse with lysosomes. These organelles contain enzymes that finally metabolize the blebs and their components.